back everybody so um, I have my high poly mesh right here uh, same rock as before um, I actually haven't done anything to it I looked over it and there's uh, some minor stretching topology but that is the great thing about rocks like this um, it doesn't matter a whole lot it won't show up in the normal map so uh, let's go ahead and export this and take it into mesh lab so what we're going to want to do is take the mesh, export, got a, this, yeah, I should rename this too. Just name it HP, save, and export selection. And let's go to portfolio, new portfolio, scenes, temple outside. Uh, and what I'm actually do is name this a favorites. So now let's go ahead and go into what am I doing? Mud box exports. HP Rock 01. What was named before? Yeah, I guess that's okay. Let's go ahead and name it that, and um, make sure it's an object file save it it'll take a minute alright send it over into mesh lab and this is a free program I'm sure many of you have it because it's uh, well it's free and it's a really good way to retopologize um, really good way to quickly topologize I should say it's not the best way to do it in fact um, uh, just, I don't know, it's, a, it's an easy way to do it, so leave it at that, and let's go ahead and go into uh, here and import our uh, high poly rock. It'll take a minute. I'm a bit rusty with this too, so bear with me guys. I haven't used uh, Mesh Lab in a little while now. Alright, there's our high poly mesh. And did not mean to do that. And you can tell the editor is very slow. My computer is actually quite powerful, so. Um, uh, it's just. <laughs> it's hard to do anything with this high poly of mesh, so. Um, in tools. I don't think it's in tools. It must be in. It's in one here. Polygon quad mesh. Eh. It's in one of these. Hold on. Remeshing and simplification reconstruction, I think. Um, I think it's quadratic. Quadric. Simplify texture mesh. Um, simplify mesh using quadratic based edge collapse strategy better than clustering but slower. So I think, yeah, I believe this is the one quad quadratic edge collapse decimation. Let's go ahead and click on that, and it'll you'll get this little dialog box, and you can target the target number of faces. So, for me, being a small, very small rock. Or not very small rock, but a small rock that's going to be out of the way. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to say I want 1,000 faces, and since this is a scene, it's not intended for a, a game performance. I should say it's actually just environment art. I don't have to really take into deep consideration for this, but we also want. Uh, you want a decent amount of topology there, so um, 1,000. I, I think that'll be all right. So let's go ahead and do that. Threshold is five percent reduction. Um, that's the other thing. You can add a target number of faces, or if you just want a percentage reduction, you can actually enter a percentage rather than a target number of faces. 
Um, preserve normal, preserve topology. Don't want to do that because the topology is crappy. Planar simplification. I think that's all good. So let's go ahead and hit apply, and it's going to go ahead and, and uh, decimate it for us. It will take a minute. Take a quick drink of water. <coughs> All right, here we go. As you can tell, it's not by any means great topology, but um, it gives us something a lot more reasonable to work with. So let's go ahead and file. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and save the project just in case. Let's go ahead and go to um, Let's go ahead and go here and no. Hmm. Let me open up the desktop. Oh well. Maybe I won't do that. Because it doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and export the mesh. And let's call or is it going to save? Hmm. Export mesh as. That's what I was looking for. Let's go to Jack. I guess I'll just do it to the desktop because it doesn't want to go anywhere else. So. Let's go ahead and call this. LP. Let's not export it as something we can't use. Let's export it as an object file. I think it's an object file that we want. Yeah, an object file. Let's go ahead and save it. Um, and press OK. So we'll export it. And now what we need to do is come back to Mudbox. And now what we can do is we can import that very same mesh. Did it export to the desktop? No, it did not. Hmm. Like I said, guys, bear with me. Showing on my desktop. Oh wait, no, it's showing in here. Oh. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some moving around stuff real quick because that's like the worst possible place for it to be at. It takes the longest to get there. I got the low poly rock. Let's go into. Portfolio, new portfolio scenes, sit temple outside, and I could have just used my shortcut that I just made, but that is okay. So let's go ahead and go for let's create a new folder, mesh lab. Justin, so you guys can see this, I made a new folder in here, mesh lab actually exports. And let's go ahead and drag this over here. Okay, so now we have that in there. Close that. Come over here and let's go ahead and import the mesh. Outside. 
Mesh Lab. Let's do all formats. Oh, that wasn't uh shoot. That was the wrong format. So export mesh. Is there another format? Polygon standard format. They don't want to do it as all known formats. Oh, here we go. There's more stuff. Oh, OBJ. My mistake, guys. So let's go ahead and. Is there a better place to put this? Okay, there we go. Save. Oh shoot. Okay, good. It didn't crash. I don't have a save file for this. Um. Okay. Mesh Lab. Let's go to the desktop and let's see if it's on here. Uh, I don't see it. Might have saved in the same place as it was before. saved in the wrong place. It's okay. Um, users. Check. Or didn't. So where is it? R. There's no... Did not export. Yeah, I mean this this program's free, so <laughs> I don't know. I guess um, you get what you pay for. Actually, dang it! Why do I keep on doing that? Export mesh as uh, how? Okay, it got in there somehow. So it got into here. I think. Export mesh as Jack Desktop BOI. I want to save it as an OBJ. And for that matter, let's just go in here and let's go to Portfolio. Let's go to New Portfolio Scenes Sit Temple Outside Mesh Lab Exports. Save it. Okay. Hopefully, it went into the right place this time. OFF, OBJ, I think. Hopefully, that, yeah, that's an OBJ. I think. Anyways, let's try it. So, import. Let's go to Mesh Lab. Yep, there it is. OBJ. Awesome. Alrighty. So now, when you click on that, you'll see it is there. In fact, go to Move Tools, Translate. There it is. Looks awesome, right? Okay, so now, let's go ahead and rename this LP. And um, actually, on second thought, what we really need to do before we do anything else. Uh, I wish I would have remembered this, but we need to unwrap the uh, the low poly mesh before we bring this in to bake out the um, the maps. I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's go ahead and open up your choice modeling program. It can be Maya, Max. I have both. Um, they both work well. Um, 
Blender if you don't have either of those. Uh, even ZBrush has its own uh, um, UV unwrapping. So it's definitely not hard to come by. So, And of course it's necessary. Maya is probably not the best thing for unwrapping, I've noticed. It doesn't really give you a whole lot of options, but um, there's a couple things that um, make it okay for doing this rock. Let's just go to um, rendering, I think. No, polygons. And then let's go and import our, uh, our base mesh desktop. I wish I wish I had my um, saves or uh, my favorites because it gets really old going through all these hierarchies. Import and we have our mesh here. Let's go ahead and just go smooth shade it, and it doesn't look bad. I'll prob. What I might do with this truck is I might smooth the normals uh, when it's all said and done, I'm not sure. Um, it just looks kind of harsh. So let's go ahead and do a automatic projection. And let's go ahead and open up the UV editor and that is really horrible. Um, I don't know. It's about the same as before, and before I didn't have issues with UV seams because of the way I did it. But I might try this again. Uh, make sure your entire mesh is selected. And let's go ahead and uh, move UV shell. And let's go ahead and bring this over here. Because of the way I did it um, before, is I. Um, I actually repeated a texture and so I wouldn't have to um, and so I'd have the additional detail that I wanted for the mesh so normally you wouldn't have them in these spaces like this um, what are you doing? Thank you. Didn't want to do it right. But in this case, it works very, very well. I'm just going to set that there. Never want UV sharing the same UV space. I'm just making sure it's the right size. And I didn't want to do that either. There we go. So, next one. Go ahead and drag it over here. Let's size it up. And then let's bring it up. Yeah, last time I tried this, I didn't have any issues with UV seams, so. Because I used a tileable texture. And, um. Normally, this kind of unwrap would be really problematic, but. Because of the way I make my rocks, um. I think it'll be okay. Let's go ahead and just snag the rest of this. And uh, actually, let's snag these. Bring them over here. R size, size them up. Let's go ahead and rotate them so they fit in diagonally. I think. Move the UV shell. Ease some more. It's gonna be close. No, not as close as I thought. Okay. So let's go ahead and bring it down. How about there? That should be good. And bring these down too. Let's go ahead and size them up. About the same size. No. Okay. So I think uh, that's kind of silly of me. I didn't use the original UV space. I think that should be good. Now. Oh, wait, that was. 
That was a problem before, though. Hmm. CryEngine has a very excellent, uh, has a very excellent way of doing, um, AO, screen space ambient occlusion, and it works quite well. So I didn't actually worry about baking out the, uh, the stuff. So what I might do is actually re-unwrap this because it does need to share the same UV square because um, oh whoopsie um, can I do it again there we go uh, and the reason why is because um, when you have multiple spaces like that uh, it creates a bunch of maps for each individual UV um, space and it didn't it didn't work at all so um, and again that's my personal experience with things so don't always take my word for it just um, in fact I who knows I might have done something wrong there but I just don't want to try it again. Looks pretty good. Maybe see if I can fit that down here. I always try and pack your UVs well because they don't they don't pack them at all well automatically. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this up. In fact, I think I'm gonna rotate it all the way around. And let's go ahead and bring this up. I think. size them up to there and repack them. So let's go ahead and get that one in place. I also want to give some space between each mesh uh, for UVing because uh, you might get some bleeding, so you don't want that. And no, it's not having that problem anymore, so. Odd. I'll drag that up. Hmm, no one's having a problem. Okay, I have not figured this out at all. As you can, I've been having this issue for a little while now. Where the UVs get locked into a place or something. Oh well. Um, certainly not what I would like for a UV space, so... This one's working. Or 
No, it's not one. figure that out. That's very, very annoying. There it went. If you guys have any uh, idea what's going on, please <laughs> give me a heads up. Because this is the very much so the most annoying thing. This one works. There, no, it doesn't. Uh, does that one work? Huh. That one works. Why don't these work? Now that one doesn't work. That one does. Oh man, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so in this case, this one instance, I might just go with a basic UV layout. It's definitely not what you want to do, but. I mean, look at all that unused UV space. It's ridiculous. But, I don't know. I don't know what other option I... And look at that. Now it starts working again. Um, I'm very tempted to uh, try it again. There's a way to deselect that tool. Because I think that might have to do with it. Yeah, I'm just going to go with a uh, basic UV layout because I don't have time to fight, fight this. snapshot. Always good to do that. Probably could have done this in 3ds Max and not had to fight with the textures the whole, or the UVs the whole time. I might go back and do that later. So um, I'm gonna do this now and then uh, later I'm gonna replace the UV UVs and rebake my textures, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to keep on going with this. So, um, not what I wanted to do. Let's go to, to, to not tutorials, um, portfolio, portfolio new, scene, Sith Temple, outside, Maya exports. Create a new folder UVs. And let's call this Rock 01 UV. Alright, uh, 1024 is OK. Go ahead and press OK. And let's go ahead and export the mesh. So, export selection. File, export a selection. The 
mesh lab exports. Let's go to Maya exports. Let's call this underscore O one. And it has to be an OBJ. OBJ. And I think that's all right. My exports, rock a one, OBJ export. Alright. So now come back here. We can uh we're gonna wanna trash this, so let's go ahead and import the um the Maya not the Max, the Maya Export Rocco One. So that's the one we want. Let's go ahead and open it. Now it has all the correct UVs. And let's go ahead and just call this LP. Make things easier. Okay, now uh, let's go ahead and go into UV maps, extract uh, texture maps, and new operation. I just call this uh, maps extraction. I guess doesn't really matter. We are going to want um, a main occlusion map, a and a normal map. You can make a displacement map if you want, particularly if you're going to be doing any tessellation. I'm not going to be doing tessellation, so. <sighs> Let's, um, not what I was looking for. Let's go to here. So we're going to want the low resolution mesh. So LP and add selected. Now. Let's go to HP and add selected. So now we have the low poly model and the high poly model. Let's go with. I'm not sure what the search distance needs to be. I guess best guess. See, that'll do it. Let's go with an image size of 512, um, as well as 512, and texture. A bit should be fine. Let's go to back up outside. Mud box export textures. Let's do rock O one. Um, uh, da, 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 da. let's call that TIFF, save, and let's make sure everything's right, so filter, that's correct, I think that's right. So let's see. Recasting for this from outside. Best guess. 512 by 512. Maya soft homage. So um, for this one, you're going to want to go with 3ds Max. Because UDK and CryEngine both recognize 3ds Max normals. Um, over Maya and Soft Image. Um, no, no, that's where I wanted it to be. We'll call it TIFF. Let's do DNN, which stands for I can't remember what it stands for, but that's the abbreviation for a normal map. You can also do N, you can do normal, you can do whatever you like. So, save. And let's go ahead and extract. It should just take a minute. And, well, that's 
loading, I'm gonna make my way over there. I think. Yeah, my box exports. There we go. Alright. Alrighty now. So let's go ahead and go into Photoshop. I'll open. Let's go ahead and go to our mud box exports and let's go ahead and open them both up. Now we have a good normal map and what looks like a good AO map. I like uh, baking out an AO map to uh, darken up the texture a bit. So um, a lot of people only do it for terrain. I've I've always wondered why people don't do it for uh, for m like regular models. I don't know why you wouldn't, but um, that's what I do. So these both look good. They look like what they should. So let's go ahead and exit out of both of them. Let's go back to Mudbox. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bake out uh, high res. Uh, AO and a high res normal map, which is just go back to your map extraction, ambit occlusion, and just go ahead and scroll down. Let's go ahead and change this to 1024 by 1024. And um, same thing with a normal map. Let's go to here and let's go to 1020. Okay, it automatically said 1024. And what I might do is, um, you know, what? nah, I'm not gonna uh, say that. I might do a PNG to get rid of the uh, background on the ambient occlusion map, but it really doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and extract this, and uh, I'm gonna call this the end of this tutorial, and I'll be back. Uh, later to show you how to get everything into UDK and all the uh, the whole material set up and uh, everything in your scene uh, so I hope you guys like this tutorial please like comment subscribe and I will see you in the next one